Austin, the capital of Texas, and this city is hoping to party on. Coach Mack Brown and the Texas Longhorns are the new number one. Jordan Shipley, one of Mack's wide receivers, is coming off a career game against Oklahoma. But a Missouri gunslinger who grew up in this state has arrived in town, and he's determined to take down number one tonight. Two, two quarterbacks, both high school stars in Texas. One plays for his home state's team. The other kept a promise he made to Missouri. They go at it in Austin tonight. Colt McCoy has led the Longhorns to the top of the polls. And all of Texas is loving the view. Seeing a national championship for this team in the distance. But Chase Daniel makes his return home. Determined to turn the eyes of Texas towards him. And his upset hungry Tigers. the team with Heisman candidates who go from Friday night lights to the Saturday night spotlight as 11th ranked Missouri takes on number one Texas in prime time on Saturday night football. where the new number one team in the nation is defending their spot against a team desperate to get back into the national title race on Saturday Night Football on ABC, presented by Southwest Airlines. The number one Texas Longhorns taking on the number 11 Missouri Tigers tonight in the prime time spotlight. Well, folks, 1896 marks the last time that Missouri came into Austin and beat Texas. Kirk Herbstreit, I know what you're thinking. I was not the play-by-play -play man. Oh, that night. okay. It's a shocker. <laughs> <laughs> what a quarterback showdown we've got here this season. You evening. know, we had so much fun last week with Sam Bradford and Colt McCoy, and I think we're going to get another great show tonight. Chase Daniel, of course, last week with Missouri. They, they, he really felt that he let his team down. The three turnovers in the second half against Oklahoma State in the loss. He's been anxious to get back on the field now for seven days. And Colt McCoy, the hottest quarterback in the country, completing 79% of his passes. I got a feeling. This is going to be another shootout in the Big 12. Buckle up, everybody. We're about to go on a wild ride one more time with Kenny Chesney at the helm. Mac Brown's biggest concern this week has been the possibility of a letdown after Texas' an emotional win over Oklahoma. Lisa Salters picks up the story. Well, Brian, I'm over here at the Longhorns practice facility because that's where Mac Brown basically turned this place into a graveyard earlier this week, all in a unique effort to get his players to put last weekend's big win against Oklahoma behind them. You remember Mac was just telling us that he felt that Texas was being set up for a letdown, so he was trying to do something to get his players to look forward. So he basically had a funeral for the Oklahoma game ball. They buried the ball. They buried the newspaper clippings. They buried the T-shirt all right here on the practice field. Now, I asked Colt McCoy what he thought about burying the game ball, the funeral for the Oklahoma game ball, and he said, I have never heard or seen anything like it before, but I think it was appropriate and even important, especially for the younger guys. McCoy told me that, you know what, we had to let that game go. As big as the Oklahoma game was for us last weekend, this game tonight against Missouri is even bigger. Brent. All right, Lisa, what coaches won't do huh, to get his troops ready for this? Another big game at the Big 12 Conference. Now, Missouri won the toss. They did not defer, Kirk. They want the football immediately. And I think that speaks volumes about the way Missouri executed offensively last week. They've been anxious to get back out in the field. They win the toss. Usually in a big game, you defer. And in this case, Missouri and Chase Daniels say, give us the football. And guess who they want to touch it here at the start of this game? Number nine back there, Jeremy Macklin, one of the best all-around talents in the college game. And, of course, we will see what strategy Justin Tucker and the Horns will come up with here on the kickoff. Will they give him a chance? Will they kick it short? We shall find out.
underway in Austin. And they're saying, bring it on, Mr. Macklin. 20, 25, breaks free, 35, 40, and out of bounds. A huge return by Jeremy Macklin to start this game of 40 yards. Brent, I like how you said that. Texas says, hey, we're the number one ranked team. You're in our house. We know you're a great returner, <clears throat> but bring it on, Jeremy Macklin, and that's exactly what he did. Gets a nice set of blocks by the wedge, and then it's just him finding a crease, and that is just speed. He runs a 4-3 electronically. He has the speed to run with this Texas team. Chase Daniel, the Missouri spread. Four receivers and a running back who can slip out. And they run a reverse, and what a stop by number 99. Roy Miller, the big defensive tackle, blows it up. But Roy Miller had such a big game last week. Here he is. Watch him be able to get penetration. There's no way that Ryan Madison could deal with the strength and the power of Miller, who ran himself right into a reverse, potential reverse there for Missouri. Puts him in second and 17 after the seven-yard loss. Now with the five out, Chase Daniels completes his first throw of the night to the 44-yard line to his talented tight end, Chase Kaufman, his leading receiver. How about the impact players? It starts with Jeremy Macklin. We saw him already on the big kickoff return, but of course he'll be heavily involved. They move him around a lot. Chase Kaufman, the big tight end at 6'6". They look for matchups with him. Hey, Derek Washington, not as big a factor last week. Didn't have many carries or many yards. Tonight he has to be more involved in the Tigers' attack. You can see across your screen, the five Missouri wide receivers. Kendall tries to get there, hits him on the release, incomplete. Sergio Kendall will play defensive end tonight in the nickel package designed by Will Muschamp. Well, Kendall on one side and Arakpo on the other give them tremendous speed. Lamar Houston also pushing to get in there. And this is what you have to do to Chase Daniel is get him out of rhythm. And that was three and out for this highly explosive Missouri offense on the road. So Jake Harry, you can see how infrequently he has punted. And now they're going to use Jeff Wolfert. They're going to switch to Jeff Wolfert. He punted several times last week against Oklahoma State. The two talented wide receivers, they want to put him on the move. He's a former soccer player. That's why they went to him. This could be down inside the five at the six-yard line. So what a brilliant punt by Wolford, who normally is the field goal specialist and one of the great all-around kickers in Missouri history. That says it all right there. It was such a big deal last week and what Oklahoma State did in forcing two three and outs. And here's the very first possession. And Texas and Will Muschamp step up and force Chase Daniel on the sideline and force that three and out. Missouri needs to take some success early in this game, I think, after what they went through last week to get themselves confident again to think they can win this football game. Colt McCoy's turn. Inside shuttle pass. Obadiah breaking the daylight on first down. He had three or four major big plays against Oklahoma. And here he is on the first play of the game receiving the shuttle pass for 12 yards. Obadiah looks like a different player these last few weeks. Started with the game at Colorado and Boulder, of course, last week. Look at the quickness, the steps that he has right now. And I think the confidence that he is running with, we're really starting to see now this running back, I think, mature in the last few weeks for the Longhorns. Ball at the 17-yard line. McCoy completes his first pass. He throws a screen to Shipley for another 10 yards. Jordan Shipley, certainly one of the impact guys, eh, Kirk? Yeah, they, uh, they, they put on quite a display last week, and I think had their coming out party. It starts with Jordan Shipley, who again, 11 catches, 112 yards against the OU Sooners. Juan Cosby, he had such a big game last week, but also the big block that people were talking about. And Obaniah, as I said, after that first uh, pickup that he had, I think he's really giving Colt balance in this offense. Second and short, Obaniah picks up the first down. It's his second first down of the night after the 31-yard line. And 
Colt McCoy, who has stepped to the top of the Heisman leaderboard. Yeah, when you're completing, everybody take in that number, 79% of your passes. That's tough to do for anybody at any level. And he right now is what I like to refer to as being in the zone. You see it in every sport. And Colt McCoy is very, very confident and comfortable in leading this Longhorn attack. Cosby's a slot in to the short side to the quarterback's left. McCoy is a fine runner to the 36-yard line. and brought down Witherspoon, a very active linebacker. He's a junior out of the state of Texas, one who got away. Yeah. Greg Davis, the offensive coordinator, did such a good job last week. There he is right in the middle of putting Colt in this offense in a, in a position to attack the OU defense and this is the formation with four receivers and one back that he hasn't used in eight years and he brought it out last week. Benaya picks his way. So the one thing that Greg said he had to do Kirk was to also keep in mind the clock because if you give it to Missouri too often you know you're going to get burned. So part of it obviously to move down but keep that clock running. They had a time of possession edge on Oklahoma last week. Yeah, and that's such a big factor. And Oklahoma State, the Cowboys had a big edge over Missouri last week. As this game goes on, it's not just about having production, but you're right, keeping Chase Daniel on the sideline where he can't put points on the board. Third down and two. Line of scrimmage was clean as he threw to Shipley who caught it. And it will depend on where the forward progress spot is. Mark Christopher, the middle linebacker, with the stop for the Tigers. Anytime he gets to third down, more often than not, Jordan Shipley, who is really replacing the tight end in this new formation that Greg Davis brought out last week because of the injuries that they've sustained. Number eight, Jordan Shipley, really has taken over that role. On the first down, he hits Cosby, picking up eight more yards, and so methodically, uh, the Texas offense... They're wielding a scalpel here <laughs> in the early going. Coming out, remember, for the six-yard line. Uh, they are attacking in different ways. Uh, you know, the, the one thing about Colt McCoy, because of the experience that he has now in his third year as a starting quarterback, I think you see Greg Davis has so much confidence in everything that he calls that doesn't matter the down and distance and where the football is. He knows number 12 is going to make good decisions. But I, uh, he's hot early. Tried to extend for another first down, and it'll depend on where he is marked. Looks like a little bit short where they're marking that one. Right now, they're just kind of being patient, which was a big part of last week's attack early in the game against Oklahoma. By running this no-huddle offense, we see it all across the country. The theory is not just to create tempo, but to eventually wear the defense down and then exploit the defense in the second half. This is a double tight end formation that you're looking at. McCoy stepped over behind the left side of the offensive line. And Charlie Tanner, Yulatoski, the left tackle. Yulatoski's an interesting story, number 74 for the Longhorns, folks, because during his days in high school at Southlake, he was the left tackle for Chase Daniel for several years. Now, when Daniel was a senior, Yulatoski had already moved on, so he knows both these quarterbacks very, very well. Missouri needs to be careful. Texas could be lawing into sleep and looking for a big play. First and ten, they try to get to him, deflected incomplete. Open Iowa is running out, and there's a penalty flag. A late hit on Missouri. Got into the backfield. and Personal foul, number two, defense. 15-yard penalty, automatic, first down. That's Brian Coulter, a junior defensive lineman from Louisiana. Mm -hmm. Every coach in America will tell you when you go on the road, those are the things you just cannot afford. Instead of being second and ten and having a chance maybe to get pressure on Colt McCoy, it's an incompletion, and then you give up 15 yards, and Texas moves deeper into Missouri territory. That's a mental error there by the Missouri Tigers here early in this game. If you just joined us, this is Texas' first drive. Missouri three and out. First and ten. Play fake. 
Obanaya in as a receiver that time. He slipped out, and the ball on the ground is recovered, though. And that was Greg Smith who pounced on it. Well, the, the, when you have a big day like last, the, the receivers last week, when they had a, such a big day, what happens is the linebackers clear out, and they start to look for Shipley and for Cosby. And what that's going to do is open up a huge vacancy right in the middle of the Missouri defense and a good decision yet again by Colt McCoy finding open eye. And Vondrell McGee checks in as the running back. He's number two. He's right to the left of McCoy. He gets the call up the middle into the red zone and beyond to the five-yard line. So McGee's first carry of the game, and it gives the Horns a first and goal. And Brent, your big guy, Ulitowski, led the way here. Great block, 74 on the left tackle. Picks up Christopher, the linebacker, and there's the seam. And I'm going to tell you something. Texas takes a lot of criticism because, wow, how can Colt McCoy lead the Longhorns in rushing? All I can tell you is they've got a number of backs, and when you throw in McGee and Fozzie Whitaker to go with Ob Obaniah, this is, this is a stable of backs for the Longhorns. And McGee stays in. Play fake. McCoy's going to go for the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Quarterback Colt McCoy strikes gold in the early yard. What a drive for the Texas Longhorns. They move this football right down the field. He gets into the end zone, and Colt McCoy throws the football. Well, it was a five times, six times, and completes. And he's five for five on that drive. Very patient. Great drive for Texas in the early going here. Wow. Hunter Lawrence tacks it on. So the first round goes to McCoy. His buddy Chase Daniel, three and out with Missouri, and he'll be coming up next when we continue as the Longhorns score first here in Austin. All right, Kirk, the Texas sky burnt orange like everything else in this city these days. Is the Longhorns strike first, Colt McCoy, his fifth touchdown rushing this season. Perfect five for five throwing. As Kirk Herbstreit told you, a very efficient drive. Now let's see if Macklin, and Daniel, and Tigers can answer. This one, they kick it short. Field it at the 26 yard line with the fair catch right there. Earl Goldsmith. So when we come back, we'll see if Chase Daniel and the Tigers can begin their first scoring drive of the night. Saturday Night Football on ABC. Brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Low fares, no hidden fees. Cadillac. Introducing the 2009 Cadillac Escalade Hybrid. And AT&T. Your world delivered. A lot of hardware in Coach <laughs> Mac Brown's office these days. <laughs> Beautiful. What a job he has done here in Austin. Juggle, Chase Daniel picks it back up and dropped. It'll be second down and 10 as Jared Perry bobbles the pass. It was interesting, Kirk, to read uh, Kirk Bowles, the uh, fine columnist here of the Austin newspaper. He has been a sometime critic of uh, Mac in the past, but now he said that Mac Brown has taken his place with a coaching elite, and I know you and I would certainly second that. There's no doubt, no matter who comes back on a football team for Texas, every year this is a top five program with Mac Brown here. All right, now the handoff to the running game for the first time. Derek Washington and some of the criticism of the losing effort against Oklahoma State was that that, that young man did not get enough uh, running attempts. Now, the offensive coordinator, he wasn't buying into that, but the head coach said, yeah, probably we should have given it to him a few more times. I mean, you average 172 yards rushing. You, you need to be able to do that. And you can see there's a great look at the splits, especially at the left tackle with the young freshman Elvis Fisher. We'll talk about the importance of that for Chase in a second. Five receivers. They've got their first down. Their initial first down of the night. 
Jeremy Macklin touches it now for the second time. Remember, he returned the opening kickoff. Yeah, I, I think we're going to see Chase Daniel try to, to get the tempo going that much more for Missouri. Remember last week, Oklahoma created some problems for Texas, and that's something that I think they've tried to really work out the kinks and get ready for here tonight against Chase Daniel. And let me correct myself, the third time he's touched it. Remember, on the reverse. And there is complete. They come back to him uh, out to the 45-yard line. And so the sophomore from Missouri trying to get him going here tonight. He's such a big play weapon, he'll take a break. Yes. Brown's going to say the screens for Missouri. Such a big part. I want you to watch Brian Arakpo at the bottom. Recognition and speed to chase that down from the inside out. That's how you slow down Missouri's screen game, which they will rely on upon heavily tonight. Second and six, and whistle before the snap. So we've got a penalty on this play. Dead ball, false start, offense, number 61. Five yard penalty, second down. So we've had a dropped pass, and now a penalty. Brown was guilty of that infraction, the right tackle. We've also had on the defensive side of the ball the late hit on Colt McCoy on his second and 10 that gave Texas 15 yards. You, you won't see splits like this in very many offenses, especially the left and right tackle. And they are basically the reason they're trying to push those defensive ends as far away as they can from Chase Daniel. Complete. But just back to that original line of scrimmage, Perry is the Daniel's target that time. You can see the size there. The the, you could say a lack of size for Chase Daniels listed at six feet. They also say by having those big wide splits, it creates better passing windows for him to be able to look into the teeth of that defense. I couldn't find anybody on that sideline not signaling, huh? <laughs> it's pretty busy over there. Daniel in trouble. Kendall cleans up on the play. And they are forced to punt a second time. That's how you put pressure again on Chase Daniel. The coverage sack, Arakapo eventually gets around the freshman Elvis Fisher, but give credit to the, the call by Will Muschamp because of dropping eight into coverage that allows this defense to take away all of his options, and eventually Brian Arakapo will get to Chase Daniel because of that outstanding coverage. So this time Jake Harry will punt, and it won't be Wolfen. Now he runs it over with the left foot toward the wide side of the field. And the two wide receivers are going to let this roll dead around the 18-yard uh, line. And that's where Colt McCoy and the Longhorns will come back to work for a second time. They lead it by 7 over Missouri. You're watching Saturday Night Football on ABC. Not every baseball player is watching Boston and Tampa in Game <laughs> 6 tonight. They're, of course, Derek Jeter with the former Longhorn star, Roger Clemens. They were teammates together with the uh, New York Yankees. Roger telling Derek, uh, obviously, what McCoy should do on this play. <laughs> I was kidding Jeter before the, uh, the game about his Michigan Wolverines. They looked good in the first half, but couldn't hold on in Happy Valley. Here's McCoy dropping off underneath again, and... Obanaya has been a very effective of slipping out from the backfield into the middle of that defense. He's been wide open, Kirk. Absolutely, Brandon. I think you'll see that continue here. And, and Colt McCoy, 6-6. Six six, you might be sitting at home, maybe seeing Colt McCoy for the first time, saying, well, no, no wonder he's completing 79% of his passes. Every pass he throws is for four or five yards. This is part of the process of what Greg Davis likes to do. Eventually, they'll get the Missouri defense up, and then they'll take their shots downfield for some big plays that Cosby and Chip Second and six. Offensive line incomplete. He looked for a moment like Cosby had a step, and uh, he and McCoy couldn't quite hook up. And uh, so McCoy now throws his uh, first uh, incompletion. Yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about. And, and he's right on cue. They they, they kind of wall you to sleep. They get you in the man coverage. And as soon as you put their receivers in one-on-one -on -one coverage, they're going to attack you. Great inside release. Ball just thrown a little bit uh, high there. And uh, Cosby's not able to make the catch. Looks like they're going to come. And Colt 
It's a hot receiver coming out of the backfield. Brandon Collins burns the blitz. And that is the one thing about Colt McCoy. You better be ready if you blitz. 38 yards, and he burned it perfectly. Brent, you're well-schooled here. It's just a simple hot route. When a linebacker comes, you always have to have a hot option. And this time, it's number five, Collins. The blitz comes. He comes right underneath. Once he got the ball off, it's just about making a catch. There's nobody left there to slow down Collins. Another check over to the sideline for what... Uh, Greg Davis sent down from the booth to see what they want here on first and ten. This is a very well coached Texas football team. It was last Saturday. Uh, we got a penalty this time, having uh, <laughs> having said that. I jinxed. I jinxed. It. It always works. Time out. Oh, okay. ah, there you good. Go. Like I said, very well coached. Very Take well. the time out. Right. Don't get a five-yard penalty. That's right. <laughs> Be safe. So, Colt McCoy, he scored the game's only touchdown here, and the Horns lead the Tigers by seven. Fifty-six-year-old Gary Pinkle, his eighth year at Missouri, and he certainly turned around the fortunes of the Tigers. They are now one of the favorites in the Big 12 North, regardless of what happens here tonight. And McCoy fakes it, keeps it, and gets within a yard of that yellow first down indicator here tonight. So Colt McCoy on the ground. Remember, he's the leading rusher for the Longhorns, and he's already scored his fifth rushing touchdown of the season here tonight. Boy, Greg Davis has to be sitting up here looking down at this offense and the way it's executing, and that's been such a, uh, such an important key to the success of Texas is the consistency in the execution and the decision-making by the quarterback. Quick flip for the first down to Shipley. They barge into Missouri territory. Remember, they scored a touchdown first time they handled the ball here tonight. That, that's, that's a pass that only the quarterback and the receiver knows is going to be called. It's a look pass or a now pass. And if you leave the slot receiver alone, Colt McCoy will take the ball and throw it out there. Moves the pocket to the right. Very good throwing on the run. Shakes off a would-be tackler. With a spoon trying to get over and a great block on him. Number 11 came over, James Kirkendall, to throw that block. And he picked off Witherspoon. You know, the attention that Cosby got last week internally, I think, has created a buzz for all these receivers. Remember the big block from Quan Cosby last week against Oklahoma? Now you're seeing all the receivers want to get the accolades in the, in the team meeting because of the way they treated Quan Cosby. And that time, Kirkendall puts it on, number 12, Sean Witherspoon. But Colt McCoy, get down. I know you're tough, but it, eventually those linebackers and safeties, they're going to take you out. Second and seven deflected incomplete. So Tommy Chavis, number 48, deflected that pass. Texas has been efficient tonight on third down because most of their third downs have been third and very, very short. This time they're third and long. We'll see how they execute here, and they go to that, that empty look. Steps up, has to throw, picks up the first down at the nine-yard line, hits Cosby. What an efficient offense. Colt McCoy's ability to scramble, the threat of him running brings the linebackers up, and you have to make a decision. Are you going to come up and take away the threat of Colt McCoy running for the first, or are you going to allow him to throw? They decide to take away his ability to run. Makes it very easy for him to throw it right over their head for a first down. Obanaya stays in as the running back. Four receivers. Offensive line doing a fine job here so far. Obanaya, crease, touchdown. Two possessions, two touchdowns. Missouri under heavy fire early here in Austin. 
such great balance from this Texas offense right now that they have this Missouri defense on their heels and the Longhorns are dom dominating the line of scrimmage and Obaniah continues to impress me these last few weeks and I think he's coming into his own and becoming the feature back for this Horns offense. Hunter Lawrence adds the extra point. It's 14 nothing, and Missouri must, must snap out of this funk. In the game of life, uh, Kirk, uh, he's in the spotlight right now. Chase Daniel, this is it. And after last week's game, last week, the way they turned the ball over in the second half, now they're on the road against Texas, number one team in the country. Now 14, this is it. Chase Daniel has to step up right now. Whistle down to the 36-yard line. And, uh, and, and I believe that he will. He, they just have to find something to shake the performance from last week and these first few series. They look rattled right now on the road. They need something good to happen and in a hurry before this game gets out of hand. Throws quickly to the right to his tight end who had lined up far on the outside and Chase Coffin picks up a handful of yards on that. But this Texas defense plays with an edge, a swagger that I think we saw mainly in the second half last week and it's been on display here early in this football game. Really believe in each other. This is Macklin. Inside handoff thrown for a loss by the defensive front. Eric Washington couldn't gain a lick. Missouri's offensive line, we always want to point to the quarterback, but if you're not getting help up front, you're in trouble. It's a mismatch right now up front. You see the linebackers closing in, coming, at, coming after the ball carrier, Washington, and of course, the interior defensive lineman with Miller and Houston. Right now, they're owning the line of scrimmage against the Tigers. Third down again for Chase Daniel and the Tigers. First down, Macklin. So we've got a flag on the play, Kirk. He came from the top, and Chase Kaufman looks like he's pleading his case. Texas is indicating it's going against the Tigers, and that would be another mistake to start this game. Pass interference. Offense. Number 45. 15 yards gained from the previous spot. Replay third down. Not at all pleased by that call. Been doing what a good coach does, so perhaps he can get the next one. Chase Daniel has time. Here's Chase Kaufman with Muckleroy. They get tied up. Looks like their feet kind of get tied up there. And that's what had Gary Pinkle upset, is there was contact, but it looked like both guys there were guilty of the contact. But that was a huge, huge costly mistake and penalty for Missouri on a completion in a first down. Now they're at third and 19. Set the screen, deflected in the air. Chase tries to knock it down, and an offensive lineman came over and caught the ball. That was Brown, and they will be forced to punt. Chase Daniel knew that they were in trouble. He tries to knock it down after it's deflected. How about the athletic ability from Lamar Houston? 33 goes up to make the play. And when the ball goes up into the air, every quarterback is taught to try to knock it down before the defense is able to make the interception. As time runs out on the opening quarter, and it belonged completely to Texas. Mac Brown's team dominating on offense and defense. That's another three and out for Missouri. Well, to give you an idea how one-sided this is so far, Texas averaging 7.7 .7 yards in offensive play, and Missouri only 1.8. And on third downs, Chase Daniel one of four, and Colt McCory is four of four. 
Murray's punt. Going to give Texas good field position. A dangerous catch over there, but he didn't want to lose yardage. Shipley with good hands. Let's check in down below with Lisa. And uh, Lisa, what's going on with Missouri? Well, Brent, you can tell that players are trying to stay positive, but you can also tell that they're very frustrated when the defense was over here on the sideline. Players were yelling at one another. Safety William Moore was going up and down to the defense saying, look, we are better than this. It's everybody. We're missing tackles, and we just don't do that. We are letting this get out of hand. For offense, when Chase Daniel just came off the field, he went over to his players and said, no more dumb mistakes. We are converting. It's the penalties that are killing us. Brent? The hangover from that upset at the hands of Oklahoma State in Columbia last week. This is a huge defensive stand for the Tigers on this series. McCoy snaps off another completion, Kirk, and he's got nine yards on first down, hitting Cosby. And you say it's a huge defensive stand, and they haven't even come close to stopping Texas right now. And this offense, for, for Colt McCoy, they've been able to do so many different things, but I still think that they have Missouri's defense adjusting to what they're seeing, and they, they have them back, not really sure of themselves and what they're doing and the way they're executing. Obanaya could not get the first down. That was because Ziggy Hood, one of the best defensive tackles in the Big 12, he held his ground. You're looking at a very, very good defensive lineman right there, folks. He plays some Sunday football someday. Trust me on that. And when, when a player like Ziggy Hood is out on the field, he's a leader. He's been around for three years. You're right. He's going to go to the NFL. When you're in a funk like this, you need Ziggy Hood and Sean Witherspoon and William Moore, your guys. Somebody needs to step up and make a play. Cody Johnson, a power back in behind the defensive lineman, Miller, and he just goes in behind 99 and then put his head down and picked up a few more to the 30 and Texas has its first down. Uh, William Moore is one of the better safeties in the Big 12 and he's going to go for a ride here right there right at the first down marker. The all Big 12 safety matches up with big Cody Johnson and Cody Johnson takes him for about three or four yards heading towards the end zone. McCoy 10-12 tonight. Thrown for 108 yards, run for a touchdown. Finally touched on a passing play, and he'll be sacked. And the big fellow was coming hard. Ziggy Hood. It's the first time tonight that Missouri brought pressure, and they were not burnt with the hot pass that McCoy has thrown or the, the option route where he can get rid of the ball quickly. This time, Missouri does a good job of not only pressuring, but taking away the easy throw to not allow McCoy to have anything to do with the football right away. Scott's loved that hand by Ziggy. His <laughs> coat almost tore away from him, and Ziggy would not let it happen. That's a classic performance by a talented defensive lineman. Second down at 20, drop in the screen and underneath. And Brandon Collins, who ripped off that big game when he was the hot receiver with his second reception of the night. I think Brandon Collins and Malcolm Williams, a couple young receivers, as Texas continues to try, not just tonight, but the rest of this year. I think Shipley and Cosby are going to get so much attention that I think the growth and development of Collins and Malcolm Williams is going to be essential for this offense to continue to grow and continue to be uh, so efficient uh, as we're seeing tonight. Four-man rush on third and 12. McCoy can't find an open receiver. Going to go in zone. Well, in. Touchdown. Field judge signaling touchdown to Malcolm Williams. That's a backbreaker if you're a Missouri fan right there. Third and 12, Kirk. And they go 32 yards. Brett, I just talked about the development of Collins and Malcolm Williams. And here's young Malcolm Williams, the freshman, going up to make this catch over top of William Moore, the safety who was late in getting over, and Justin Garrett. And there's, there's the growth right there from both of these young receivers. Ecstatic in Austin. Stunned in Columbia, Missouri right now. Twenty-one nothing, Texas leading Missouri. Here is
is Malcolm Williams going up. But look at William Moore, how close he is to making the interception. Of course, last year, he was a ball-hawking safety. He had eight interceptions that time, just not able to get high enough to take that football away from the young freshman receiver, Malcolm Williams. That's why they like receivers big, 6'3 to a 6'1 defensive back. Two-inch advantage on that play, and moving up was Macklin to a new spot. Let's get our update tonight from Matt Weiner. Matt, what's going on, my friend? And here, Chase Daniel trying to rally and almost threw a pick six. Palmer had it in his hands, and nothing but the end zone ahead of him. Brent, right now you have a quarterback that's as good as anybody in America who's just in, in a bit of a funk that's carried over from last week to this week. That is a throw that he's able to make in his sleep for a read that he's able to make time after time after time. But right now he didn't even see Palmer, and he threw it right into his chest. Coming off a three interception performance against the Cowboys. Fake to Macklin coming around. Comes toward the sideline. Deflected out of bounds. Incomplete. It's third down. That was McElroy. Trying to figure out how to shake Daniel and the offense loose here. With every snap, this Texas defense gains more and more confidence. I think Jeremy Macklin has got to get involved. He's way at the bottom of the screen. He's got to get involved here and make a play. Only one of four on third down, and they're not a favorite here. They need 10 yards. Under pressure. Going down. Sacked. And that was Jared Norton, who shares that middle linebacking spot with Rashad Bobineau. Henry Melton, the defensive end, came in with the pressure. Now we talked about these gaps. Watch what happens when you have great defensive linemen with the ability, with such quickness, to be able to shoot through those gaps. It's one thing to want to push the defensive ends way to the outside, but in the interior, the fastest point is the, from point A to point B is a straight line, and right now that's what you're seeing from Texas. Wolfert comes back in to punt. He and Ori have been uh, exchanging punts here tonight. The last one, this one's out of bounds. That's back-to-back -back short punts by Missouri. So, the Tigers, four possessions tonight and three three and out. It's more than they had any game. the youngsters at the Dell Children's Medical Center appreciate the horn players coming over and paying a visit. My quarterback Colt McCoy means so much to all of those youngsters and here is Colt. Three possessions tonight for the Longhorns and three touchdowns. They take over following a 17-yard punt at the 41. McCoy to take off again and Brought down by Chavis. Okay, Kirk, here you are. Uh, here Here's you your half flag test of the night, Les. Let's see how much you know about Texas football. The oh. duck says, come on, Kirk. I'm nervous. How did oh, Bevo my. get his name? Why is he known as Bevo? There are several answers here? to this question. There, there are. <laughs> well, how, how much time are you going to give me here? Bevo says, for the Aflac trivia question, Kirk, I'm disappointed you don't know that. <laughs> Let me, it'll come to me. I know it will. Get off that cell phone. No text messaging allowed in the press box. Here's Obanaya shaking bacon. Going to board the end zone. He's inside the 10-yard line. And Garrett brings him down. A 26-yard gain. Another great job up front by Charlie Tanner. Left guard makes a nice block there to open this up. And I'm telling you, Obanaya is showing a different side of himself these last three weeks. Look at the acceleration, the shifty, quick, quick moves against this linebacker. Linebacker didn't have a chance. And when all of a sudden he gets into the open field, he's dangerous. Obanaya straight up the middle, driving end zone, trying to get his second touchdown, pushed in, there's the signal, touchdown. That's his second touchdown of the night. That's four for four, Kirk. 
Any question who the number one team in the country is? No, sir. This offensive line just controlling things up front. And then Obaniah just lowers his shoulder. And Dell Howard doesn't have much of a chance to slow him down. This is a confident and dangerous Texas team. Well, I guess old Mac Brown burying that that ball from the Oklahoma game and all those articles. Might, and, have, to, uh, might have to bury another <laughs> ball with the Oklahoma State next week. <laughs> wow. What a start. I you better look out yeah, now. A Bevo Rodeo. And the Aflac trivia question. How did Bevo get his name? The big fella's upset. Well, here's one that we all grew up to believe was true. The Texas a and branded the yeah. steer 13-0 after a yeah. win in 1915. Texas then made a B out of the 13 and E out of the hyphen. Now, have you seen a C upper part up there where that yeah, brand yeah, is? Yeah. yeah. So that now that's the old theory. So a historian a came guy. by yeah. tonight and said the new most popular theory has been that it was borrowed from the label of a non-alcoholic near beer, Bevo, produced by Anheuser Busch. That's a new one that I like a lot. <laughs> yeah, yours, <right? laughs> you came up with that one. <laughs> There's Macklin down in the punt in the end zone. <laughs> yes, Matt, Bebo fine. wants an update. Tell him what's going on, my friend. All right, Matt, and here it is time for the wake-up call. That's Jimmy Jackson who has checked in. And the Mizzou offense has now run 16 plays for about 15 yards. I mean, that's just not going to cut it. Yeah, and, and I, I, I think that the thing that this is so impressive, the numbers there speak for themselves, but the job that Will Muschamp has done, Chase Daniels like an offensive coordinator playing quarterback. He knows what to do with the football before he gets it, and right now he has no idea. A first down. Kaufman extending for it. Daniel needing to get something going here. They're doing such a great job of disguising their looks. There's a great look at Will Muschamp. Disguising their looks, mixing up and being multiple, that it just has this offensive line, really, where they're, they're guessing and they're not communicating well up front. Daniel going to go deep. Got one-on-one -on, -one on the sideline and incomplete. Macklin, the intended receiver, and Chucky Brown, the sophomore from Houston, all over him. Pretty good, pretty good coverage here. That's a great matchup. Chucky Brown has good speed. Macklin trying to run by him. The ball is underthrown, which allows Brown to catch up. Macklin's never able to secure the football. And that's a good-looking young cornerback, number eight, Chucky Brown. Average gain per play, 1.3 yards. Daniel rolling hard to the right, throws underneath, and pulling that pass in was number 81, Denario Alexander. Remember, this is this is still as, as good as Texas looks right now with the defense. This is still a young Texas defense. And you got to believe with a veteran like Chase Daniel that he's going to keep coming at him, keep attacking. This time he loves to roll to his right. You know, anytime you see him get pressure, he's typically going to roll to his right, and this time he's able to hook up with Alexander. And there's Palmer, number 13, walking off. Remember, he uh, left that Oklahoma game early in Dallas last week with an injury and didn't come back. He had a hamstring that bothered him, and it forced Aaron Williams when they went to their nickel package, and he's coming onto the field right now, number four. Williams, along with Dion Beasley, will be out there, but really it's the true freshman now, Aaron Williams, who, who is uh, replacing Ryan Palmer. For the first time, it looks like Missouri might mount a drive here this time, and they bring the reverse with Macklin again. 45 out to the 47-yard line, so a good game before Bobino brings him down. Think about it. When you have Aaron Williams in the game, you have a, a true freshman in Aaron Williams. You got Deion Beasley, who's the, the, the older player. Deion Beasley's a junior. Chalky Brown's a sophomore. Blake Gideon is a true freshman. Earl Thomas is a redshirt freshman. I mean, it, it's about as young as you can get, and to think about how well they're playing is, is borderline frightening. Second and four. Three down linemen. 
And that's what they rushed with. Drop eight into coverage, and still Daniel gets to Kaufman again. So for the first time tonight, the Missouri spread is starting to click, Kirk. Absolutely, and, and they've also reduced their splits to not have Texas to be able to just shoot through these gaps, especially between the guards and the center. That's where Texas has done a good job of penetrating. Look how tight they are now. It's the, the adjustment that they have made is because Texas has done a good job shooting through those gaps. There's the handoff to Jackson. Jackson brought down by Thomas, who moved up. I think part of uh, you know, you, when you when you have such big splits, you're putting your offensive linemen out there on an island where they're in one-on-one -on -one matchups and they're just getting overmatched against Texas. So an adjustment that Dave Christensen makes, the offensive coordinator, is look at the difference in the splits, especially as I said, in the middle of this offensive line. Yeah, they've had to make a tackle switch when they went to that unbalanced and uh, Jackson picked up the first down Brown went to the sideline with an injury and Gregory had moved over from guard to tackle and Webbles had moved into that guard spot so now we've got a little bit of an injury situation with their offensive line by far the best looking drive that Chase Daniels put been able to put together tonight firing again with another completion and Alexander, his second catch during this drive, and now the offense is starting to click. Now we're starting to see some rhythm from Chase Daniel. A lot of success throwing underneath this coverage from Texas and Will Muschamp. One of the things he'll do is he'll start to walk his defensive backs up and take away that cushion to really challenge those receivers. There they are. And it's a three-man rush. Macklin busted down at the 12-yard line. Earl Thomas making the hit. Well, the most important thing there is they, oh, Missouri always says we want the football out by about 1.8 seconds. Well, that was a lot longer than 1.8. You need time to be able to execute like that. And he finds eventually his favorite target in Jeremy Macklin coming right across the middle of that defense. Two things to note on that play. The umpire right in the thick of the action as the receiver came, and he juggled it before he pulled it in. First down and 10, they show the end around motion. They throw to him after faking the run with him, and that is Jarrell Jackson, and that's his first reception of the night. He is a freshman from Houston. Now that you're starting to see the source, <laughs> look at the this guy. Which church. one's hot? Which one of you guys <laughs> is delivering the goods here? Oh, indicators. 12th play cover, Kirk, and this drive. Second down and four. And a direct snap this time to Washington. And Texas not fooled. You can tell they prepared themselves for that. Washington taking this direct snap. A little bit of a fake handoff this time to Macklin. Keeps the football. But again, Texas is prepared for everything because... This is part of, anytime you face Missouri, you know to expect the unexpected because they love to throw a few little wrinkles to make you think about a lot of things and get you out of position. I'm not sure I would have taken the ball out of the hands of the quarterback who for the first time tonight was hot. Regardless, here's a third and five for Chase. End zone, juggle incomplete. And now we'll go to fourth down. Trying to take advantage of a mismatch with his size. Earl Thomas, number 12, the freshman, trying to slow down Chase Kaufman. It's 6-6. Six, six. This football floating in the air. And Kaufman, who has the best ball skills of any tight end probably in the country, unable to bring that one in. Fourth and five, and Missouri going. Down four touchdowns. Macklin underneath. They're going to fade high and incomplete, I believe. Let us see how they rule it. They rule touchdown in the end zone. That is Alexander who came down. The official was looking right down the line. You watch and see if the foot comes down inbounds. Wait, is he a... Wow, that's, they're going to definitely take a look at that. They're going to take a here. very close look at this one, folks. Yep. Alexander, 6'5", just goes up and over. Beasley makes the catch, but it looks like his right foot the came down on the line. It's under further review. 
Referee Crystal, Goodwin, Big 12 crew. And his Let's right, see what it looks like. His right foot clearly comes down on the white part of the end zone. And he did a great job of tiptoeing to try, it, try to make it, to make it look like he stayed in. Now, remember now, the key thing here, it was ruled touchdown on the field. <sighs> Is that indisputable visual evidence? It was a fourth down. If they don't get the touchdown, they turn it over to Texas on downs. Also remember that this is a very critical moment in this game. How about the effort by Denario Alexander to make the catch and to try to get the right foot down? I mean, it looks like his foot is on the line, but the more, the more you look at it, it's almost like it's right, <laughs> right at the edge of the line. Let's go take a look at this angle right here again. There's your freeze frame. And that's as good a view as you're going to get. And it looks like it's on the line. Big moment for Pinkle. You have a call? In? I thought he was on the white, but <laughs> was it indisputable? <laughs> that's the... <laughs> you know, and, and I'm sure that's what they're thinking about yeah, upstairs right, right now as right. they uh, as they look at Talk it. This is a tough a spot. We had a huge call. Well, right I'll tell you what I like about this. Down. Down. Okay, you know, I like about that we have stopped it to take a look at it. I thought last week in Dallas we should have stopped the game a couple of times and looked at things. Well, they didn't hesitate here. No, they're they right did on not. Top of it. Here we come. After video review, it's determined that the catch was made with a foot in the white, which means it's incomplete. Ball belongs to the Longhorns. Nothing going Missouri's way here tonight. It was a heck of an effort by Alexander. Yes, it, was. it was a great, great uh, throw by Chase Daniel. They I thought back they to that direct snap. Okay, yeah, I'm going to go back to that. I, I would not have taken the ball out of Chase Daniel's hands yeah. on that down. Sure, 6-5 goes up and over Beasley. We said from up here, and looking at the different reviews that we had, it looked definitely that his, his foot came down in the white. Now we'll find out if Colt McCoy decides that this isn't enough. He wants to try to get more points. They show pressure. And a run. Open eye up. As we take a look at the Pacific Life game summary, Kirk, I don't think we ever thought it would be this one-sided in this showdown of these two quarterbacks. Now, Chase Daniel, that last drive, was really the only time we've seen him out on the field making plays. And Colt McCoy, it just the beat goes on. This has pretty much been Colt McCoy's story all season long. And the numbers don't really tell all of the story for Colt. It's the decision-making, the leadership, Every decision he has made in the first half has been a good one for the Longhorns offense. Obanaya patiently running and still a couple yards short of the first down as Ziggy Hood makes another stop for Mizzou. Boy, that hurts for the Tigers to uh, mount a comeback not getting that first touchdown. Down by four touchdowns right now. Second sticking away here in the first half. Pope milking the clock a little bit. Comes the blitz and he hits a first down right into the spot. <laughs> You bring pressure on third down, and they just have answers. It's it's crossing routes, it's one-on-one -on -one matchups, and when you're as accurate as Colt McCoy is, if you play man, he's going to beat you either down the field or a crossing route. If you play zone, his receivers are savvy enough to find a hole in the zone. You just there really isn't an answer right now to stop Colt McCoy in this offense. That was the fourth catch by Juan Cosby here tonight, stepping up in the pressure. And it's Collins for a first down. Coming up on the Bud Light Halftime Report, John Craig and Doug will have highlights, all the day's big games. Number two, Alabama against Ole Miss, and Ole Miss 
Made a great stand in the fourth quarter. Bama hung on. You're going to want to see those highlights. And Penn State struggling against Michigan with a great second half comeback. Also, Ohio State over Michigan State. And, of course, uh, that sets up next week's, next Saturday night showdown between Ohio State and Penn State in Columbus as McCoy takes off. I would say, Kirk, right now, with BYU having lost and the Buckeyes showing their most impressive offensive performance this season, they will jump to the top ten. I don't think there's any question the Buckeyes are going to be in the top ten. And, of course, Penn State uh, figures to remain three. I mean, even though Alabama struggled late, you got to remember, yeah. Ole Miss did beat Florida. Yeah, they're a good football That's team. Yeah, exactly. yeah. Second down. Oh, Collins again. And we'll see where that spot is. It looked like forward progress. Yeah, the line's been given a first down. Yeah, you want to try to bring pressure with the linebackers? It's just a matter of this offense finding open space. This time, Christopher's going to come on a blitz. And how many times have we seen this in the first half? You're going to blitz? All right. Who's coming across the middle? Because if you're going to come with a blitz, nobody is there to take away our receiver who we're going to shoot to the middle of that defense. He's done it time after time. Simple throws, but efficient and very successful. In trouble. Stripped. Picks it off of the ground. Oh. And now fires complete. It's Cosby again for a first down. Talk about a save and a beauty by Colt McCoy. Ball was on the ground, and he turns it into a 23-yard play. Chavis got to it. You know, once in a while you have a Heisman moment. This is one for Colt McCoy. How about the athletic ability as the ball goes down on the ground? He just picks it up like a shortstop for Derek Jeter, who's watching, and he makes a nice throw. On the run, coming left, firing complete again. Obanaya still barging ahead to the 13-yard line. First and 10, 105. The crowd here, the Longhorn faithful, loving every minute of it. It looks like they wanted to kind of go in at halftime up 28 to nothing, but Colt McCoy just keeps making plays. And I'm telling you, Chris Obanaya continues to be the outlet. He finds ways to get open. This time against the zone, the outruns Witherspoon and then shows some toughness there at the end of the play instead of going out of bounds. Runs over a safety and picks up more yards. Young man from Nigeria. He's only played football about five years. He's coming on and on for Mac Brown. McGee is now the running back. They snap it off to Shipley. The roommates run an end zone. Touchdown, Texas. Can't stop this offense. We've had some number one teams struggle after rising to the top, not Texas. Notice Shipley's here, and then notice there's nobody defending him. Everybody else thinks this is a run play except for Colt McCoy and Jordan Shipley. They looked at each other, they're roommates, they've got a great instinct for one another. They probably just gave each other a look out of the corner of their eye. They knew exactly what they were going to do. The rest of the offense runs a zone play, and Colt just flips it out to Shipley for a touchdown. And Lawrence makes this a 35-0 run in the first half. Texas came in favored by only a touchdown. They lead it 35-0. I think the towers uh, may be bathed in orange here tonight, huh? 35 nothing. Who, who saw this coming? No one. I mean, who? Off of that emotional oh, win, gosh. a great win over Oklahoma. And Jordan is. Shipley was was one of the ringleaders. And, uh, I mean, they, they haven't stopped this the, uh, so the Horn offense. No. And uh, Chase Daniel uh, came close to scoring a touchdown. It's a replay turning it over, but it's uh, an unbelievable performance. And, uh, coming out now is Macklin. Macklin breaks over to the left. He's got great breakout speed. If he gets a block late, look out. And he's brought down at midfield. Let's go to Matt Weiner for Sports Center right now, Matt. Chase Daniel steps away and throws it away. It'll be second down with 22 ticks of the clock left. Yeah, when you're facing perfection, it's hard to come back. I mean, the horns haven't been stopped here tonight. 
That drive chart's about as pretty as, as, as you can. Second down and 10. Saunders gives him a first down at the, about the 33-yard uh, line. So when we we're talking about it, Kirk, uh, this uh, breathtaking uh, to see what they've done. And, and look at this. It's quite three times, 80 yards or longer, but every single time they have the ball, they're scored, they've scored a touchdown. Throwing in underneath to Washington, and Washington picks up a first down, and the clock should stop before it runs out because it's a first down. So Chase has got a shot at the end zone here. They're sending the field goal unit out, which... Just wants to get on the board, I, I guess. Well, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I, I can't blame him, you know? So Wolford will come on out here for uh, Coach Gary Pinkle. And uh, wants to have at least something on that on that scoreboard right now. I mean, uh, they have to be stunned over there, Kirk. At what's uh, I don't know what's happened? Have... They thought they were ready coming back oh, from the lost Oklahoma State. Absolutely. I I think a lot of people, including myself, thought you know you know Texas is tough to stop, but Missouri with Chase Daniel after what yeah, happened exactly. last week, they're going to put it back together. This is a great offense. They're going to find a way to put points on the board. But my, if anything, I think we we gained even more of an appreciation for Texas's defense tonight. 33 yarder. Something to build on, huh? On the board. A great first half performance. Let's go to Lisa Salters. Thanks, Mike. All right, Lisa. So uh, it's always nice when a coach losing like that. He stops and handles class. himself like a gentleman. Yeah. That was class. But they've got to figure, find some answers. 35-3. Let's send it now to John Saunders and the gang in New York for the Bud Light.